Good afternoon, everyone. Dax, this is Jack. I don't want to steal your thunder, but I'm head of product over here at Happily, and we're here to talk about the future of HubSpot. Jack, if you want to take a little bit there. Absolutely. Well, you are the real Lauban here, Dax, which is, of course, yeah. uh, boss uh, for those who, who don't speak any Mandarin. Uh, great to be here, Dax. Ryan, thanks for having me, of course. I work on the HubSpot product team, focusing on Commerce Hub. And yes, piggybacking, piggybacking off of what Dax just mentioned, I really do think that the future of HubSpot is really to be a commerce company more than anything. And both Happily and HubSpot uh, are very much on, on that same mission together when it comes to realizing that. So super excited about today's session, super excited about the future of commerce within the HubSpot platform more broadly. This is huge. So um, we're the creators of Hap uh, we're the creators of Happily, and we have a, an app called Zebra that does allow you to do a lot of commerce functionality and brings that in from HubSpot. But there's been uh, there's a lot of there's a lot on the forecast here with Commerce Hub and the different options that people have when they're talking about payments and talking about how do I get my revenue data in my CRM? How do I leverage that data? How do I just turn HubSpot into a one-stop shop to really power my business in every way, shape, or form? And that's what we want to clear out today and really have you leaving from this an exact path of how to really put this into one place. So we want to leave you with a smile and a way moving forward with a solution. And solutions are what we're here for. Uh, Jack, do you want to go through the agenda here? Sure. So we'll kick things off with just some uh, introductions so that you have a sense as to who is in the room here today and who we'll be chatting with. I'll take a, a few minutes to run you all through Commerce Hub at a very, very high level as to how it can help your business and how it works. Dax will then take the mic, run through Zebra, and then we'll just have some general back and forth around what tools would work best for you and kind of try to put ourselves in your shoes more than anything. And then folks will take us home with a little bit of a Q&A. I will say though, I have our Q&A open right now on my other screen. I also do have the chat open. Dax and I are both the type of folks who would love to engage with you all throughout the session. So if you do have any questions, if you do have any thoughts for us, go ahead and drop them in the chat or the Q&A and we'll tackle them in real time. So while we do have a dedicated session at the end, folks, no need to hold your tongue. We'd love to hear from you throughout this session. So don't hesitate to reach out to us via those channels. You should see them in the bottom uh, center of your Zoom instance. Absolutely. So um, can't stress enough, be loud, be here. We're all together. This is all a family affair. We want to be able to answer everything that you got. And first things first, let's talk a little bit about these humans that are on the other side of the screen. I actually, I actually love Jack a lot more than I did before this call because now I know we got a lot more of this going on. So, but I'm Dax, uh, co-founder of AppCommits, which is our original studio. And now we've built what's called Happily. Uh, my background has always been in tech. So I just build stuff as a mad scientist created a big SEO company. We exited from that and we built out a lot of stuff for HubSpot after seeing the opportunity of the greatness that is the, the orange sprocket. So that's a little bit about me. I'll quickly run you all through Jack real fast. So I do work at HubSpot. I've been here for almost seven years now. I think I'm the first HubSpotter that's ever been on our customer success, sales, marketing, and product teams. I now sit on our Commerce Hub product team, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago. I think I have one of the coolest jobs at HubSpot, if I'll be completely honest, but because I work on the coolest tools, but also because I get to work with partners in our network, such as Ryan and Dax. So super excited to be here with you folks today. And also, I'd love to connect afterwards. Feel free to reach out directly, connect with me on LinkedIn, whatever I can do to help on the HubSpot side of things, count me in as ready and willing to do so however I can. Love it. Jack, what's Commerce Hub? Great question and probably the best way to start us off. So Commerce Hub is HubSpot's newest product line that we announced at Inbound this year. So about two, not even two months ago, actually, at this point. And uh, it's something that is currently only available in the United States, folks. But I bet we do have some people who are not in the United States here. Stay tuned. We'll be expanding internationally in the very, very near future. So if you do have that question, I'll go ahead and just tackle it head on. Now, Dax, if you don't mind flipping to the next slide, I'll run through at a high level, what is Commerce Hub? Commerce Hub is really a platform built within the HubSpot CRM that's designed to help you all streamline your opportunity to revenue process to get paid faster, increase your revenue, and save time. 
At a high level, when I think about this commerce motion within HubSpot, I think both Zebra and Commerce Hub are very much thinking in a similar way in that you're managing all of your customers within HubSpot, yet you're billing often those exact same customers in a completely separate system, maybe your accounting system, for example. Ultimately, if you're managing everything within HubSpot, why leave to a completely different system in order to build those exact same folks that you're just going to be managing within HubSpot after that whole billing motion? I'd also argue that this commerce process is amongst one of the most important motions in your customer lifecycle because ultimately businesses are here to make money and that's the part of that process that you do want to be as clean as possible. And so at a high level, that's how we think about these commerce tools and some of the use cases that we can uh, help solve for when it comes to allowing your business to streamline some of your operations. I'd love to double click into some of these things here. So when it comes to getting paid faster, uh, I mentioned earlier, why jump out of HubSpot in order to bill your customers? I've talked to so many people who mentioned, you know what, we provided an awesome customer experience when it comes to making sure they're aware of our brand, attracting them to our website converting them into our CRM, and then maybe warming up that lead a little bit to become an opportunity. But then you need to go to your finance team and say, hey, folks, do you mind sending off an invoice to these people? And then maybe you follow up in a few days and you're like, wait, did they pay these this invoice? Ah, darn, they didn't pay it. Now we need to go follow up with them. There's a lot of just inefficiencies that come to this that comes with a cobbled tech stack like that. And so what we're trying to solve for when it comes to getting paid faster is the ability for you all to simply create an invoice from HubSpot, create a payment link from HubSpot, or connect quotes to payments and be able to get paid on your quotes. So these are three channels that you can leverage and distribute right from the CRM without having to rely on a different team and without cobbling together a tech stack. On average, folks, it takes about five tools in order to manage this quote to cash process. We think it should take you know, one or two at the most. And so we're really trying to solve for that. Just one. Yeah, totally. I could maybe weave in the accounting system there. If we're trying to be and a little- that, That's after the fact, Jack. We, we want to make everything. You, you nailed it with, with what's possible, right? It's being, I don't want to leave HubSpot in order to transact. I should be able to do pretty much as far as my role as a salesperson or as marketing. I don't want to have to go and get any type of links or make sure I set up a product elsewhere. It all should happen in HubSpot. I think you, you really nailed it uh, with this because what do I want to do? I want to increase revenue. That's what we're ultimately all here for. And so that's on a couple of different levels that you all can think about this. We can, of course, run recurring payments with Commerce Hub, something that I know that Zebra is uh, very focused on as well. We have a very simple checkout process that we see high conversion rates on. And another new feature that we recently rolled out, folks, is flexible payment processing. Before you had to use HubSpot payments, now if you'd like to plug in a Stripe account and use Commerce Hub just like everyone that's ever been using HubSpot payments, you can do so as well. So we're starting to give you all that flexibility. Now, that isn't just, uh, as we think about the flywheel time back to the HubSpot days, I don't know, six or seven years ago, what we talked about is increasing uh, your velocity, but also decreasing friction. And so increasing your revenue, that is of course adding force to your flywheel. When it comes to saving time, which is that last use case that we're really trying to solve for, that's all about removing friction from your process. So Dax, if you could uh, flip to the next slide, there are a couple of different ways that you all can think about how you can save time with our commerce tools. We're gonna to be chatting about automation a decent amount during this session. Folks, we are literally just building object commerce objects into the CRM. The payment object represents a given transaction. The invoice object is a record of payment or a record of payment that will be due. And then the subscription object, of course, represents your recurring payments. So they're objects from a user interface perspective, but also from a power underneath everything perspective as well. So what that means is you can create payment-based workflows, invoice-based workflows, subscription-based workflows. You can view everything in the custom report builder, just like every single object. And we also integrate with accounting systems such as QuickBooks to hopefully make your reconciliation nice and easy. So when it comes to billing automation and revenue reporting, all of that is going to fit into HubSpot like absolutely everything else. The amount of chief financial officers that I've spoken to over the years that are spending 
hours a week going through spreadsheets and noticing that an invoice is overdue, I think that is going to be a thing of the past as we bring the commerce motion into the CRM because you can very easily in under, I don't know, two minutes, create an invoice workflow that says if it's overdue, notify XYZ person. Or if a subscription payment fails, notify ABC person. A lot of different things that you can do on that front to hopefully allow for you all to save some time in your day. So that's how we're thinking about Commerce Hub at a high level in the use cases. Now, I'll also just tackle one thing that you all may be wondering as well. There will not be anybody in the world, I'll go as far as saying, that is just using our commerce tools. Ultimately, the way that we like to think about this is one plus one can really equal three here. And when you bring your commerce motion into HubSpot, you're able to really leverage the rest of the tools. Dax, I know that this is something that Zebra is quite proficient at as well. I won't completely read from the screen here, folks, but let's say if you have all of your commerce and customer data together, you can absolutely use automation in order to serve up the next product that someone is most likely to buy. Your sales reps don't need to be knocking on the door of your finance team to say, did these folks actually you know, pay their invoice? Your customer support reps can answer those questions right in one place as well, together with your customer success team. Let's say you wanted to provision or deprovision a license for your SaaS platform, for example, with webhooks and operations hub, you can certainly do so. Finally, I mentioned that we are building commerce objects into the CRM. You can, of course, segment lists based off of those objects as well. So maybe you wanted to show a piece of content specific to your active subscribers on your website. That couldn't be more simple. Create a list, subscription status equals active, and then call it a day from there. So Commerce Hub really does allow for you all to use the rest of HubSpot in a more proficient way, because ultimately you're bringing all of your commerce and customer data together, which has historically always been separate. And that is what we're trying to solve more than anything. You're definitely correct when I want to, oh, I just, I get too excited, sorry. HubSpot does a lot of things amazing, right? We, I mean, every every tech stack that I've seen with companies doing the right thing has HubSpot at a core. I want to be able to use tickets. I want to be able to use deals. I want to be able to use operations hub. The sales, the, the marketing, the automation, the triggers. HubSpot as a platform does exactly what you need. And especially with the advent of Commerce Hub, now people that are starting their digital transformation early into digital payments are going to be able to leverage HubSpot payments and, or excuse me, leverage Commerce Hub and just take off, right? Everybody's going to be a simple thing. It's going to be a GUI that people are used to and you win. So why we needed, why did we create Zebra then? If HubSpot was going to have all this stuff, what is Zebra for? What is Zebra different? How are they working together? And that's why I'm here. So Zebra helps Stripe customers deliver the best in class buying experience with HubSpot. Now there's a big difference of uh, what, what Zebra likes to do. So Zebra needs an existing Stripe account. You're outside of the United States currently. You're really tied into Stripe and its API. And you would say Stripe is almost one of the centers of your business right alongside HubSpot. That's where Zebra comes in. Zebra does four things extremely well. I like to, does, no, I will say a lot, but I wanna say four things that makes a lot of sense and easy to digest. Number one allows you to sync. So when you have an existing HubSpot account, so you've been using HubSpot for 10 plus years, got hundreds of thousands of subscriptions, hundreds of thousands of transactions. As soon as you install Zebra, we're going to sync that Stripe data in, and it's going to be uh, represented in HubSpot. So if you're on an enterprise level of HubSpot, we create custom objects called the Zebra subscription and the Zebra transaction. And self-explanatory, that data comes in as such. If you're using a non-enterprise hub or non-enterprise HubSpot, you'll come in as deals. And those deals will be represented as those, those are subscriptions. So you're able to get that historical data. Again, for those just starting off in their digital payments journey or looking for some, a small, a simple solution, Commerce Hub is gonna be there. You've been using Stripe for a long time. You have a ton of stuff tied into Stripe. You'll be able to get that historical data directly in on day one. Secondly, you're able to manage subscriptions and transactions within HubSpot. You'll be able to create transactions that'll go over to Stripe, create subscriptions, pause, update, automatically cancel, edit subscriptions, all those things tied into Stripe. So these are your Stripe products, your Stripe transactions, your Stripe subscriptions. You'll be able to manage those directly within the, con within the contact record. Automations, payments fail in Stripe. Subscriptions created in Stripe. Any of those triggers of things that happen within Stripe can happen within HubSpot, trigger all the automatic workflows, tickets being created, associations happening, uh, tasks for sales reps to reach out, things Payments fail, 
shoot out an instant email, want to create a uh, want to create a Stripe posted invoice when a deal moves to a certain stage, easily done. Want to cancel something after someone emails in with a certain cancellation date, automatically done. So we're able to automate based upon the triggers and also have actions that can happen with Stripe directly again within HubSpot. Last but not least, reporting. As good as you are with HubSpot reporting, because the data is now native in your CRM, all that juicy revenue data, all that juicy payment data, boom, you're able to manage that and marry that data with your sales and marketing data to build the reports and dashboards of your dreams. So we seeing MRR, MRR at the company level, MRR by marketing source. You can see transactions, upgrades and downgrades, pretty much anything you can think of that you have that data within HubSpot. We're seeing complex uh, account reconciliation, we're seeing complex donor management, uh, complex SaaS subscription management, all of this done within HubSpot, again, being the core of your business. And that's what we're here for. We know we know HubSpot is the truth. So syncing and managing, I'm going to dive deep into a few of these things. So what you're seeing is a custom CRM card that allows you to create, edit, update, create payment links, refund, all these things directly from within HubSpot. So you, you, you don't have to give out the keys to your Stripe account. Just a lot of people don't want to do finance. I'm looking at you guys. You guys own, own, own the mansion, but we just want to visit and just create a transaction and have no friction. We are customer service team. Hey, I want to cancel this. Or can I get a refund for my last transaction? Sure. How much? Click, boom, done. All within HubSpot. Managing quotes. So you're able to use our custom quote template to transact directly on the quote. So your HubSpot products will map to your Stripe products. So you'll able to do it and you'll be able to edit your quantity, billing anchor date. So I want the subscription to start in the future, one time plus recurring discounts. All of that's going to be possible to a coat that you can customize within HubSpot. As you guys know, the custom quote or quote templates are very, very customizable within HubSpot. So you can pull in different items and pull different objects and set this up. But you're allowed, this is going to allow you to directly transact on the quote. It'll map directly to Stripe come right back in the CRM on the highway, and now everything quote to cash has been succeeded, triggering your automations downstream. Going to onboarding, creating renewal deals, all of that can happen directly with our custom quote template that gets installed when you install Sabre. Automations. These are just some of the fun that you could do to automate um, sending, creating tasks, updating emails, updating records. All of that stuff is possible. Creating hosted invoices, creating payment links. You get it. When it happens in Stripe, it comes over to HubSpot and you can be able to trigger all the fun downstream. I mean, just the workflows that are possible is just enormous so what you're able to do with that Stripe data. And reporting. You ever seen this before? I have, and I love it. Being able to report on everything under the sun from MRR, churn, upgrades and downgrades, transactions over time, even things that you can't do within Stripe natively, like seeing MRR at the company level. Say that multiple people using your software, using your services at a single company, you can actually report on the MRR of that company. Uh, MRR by source, original source, again, tying in all of that marketing data. You could do MRR by landing page because of what HubSpot's able to reveal to you. So again, the concept is we're bringing that, re that revenue data, tying in with your sales and marketing data, and be able to make sure that in one stop, your entire organization from finance to rev ops to sales to marketing can see the data they need to see on a given dashboard here. So now we're going to talk about which is the right one. So Jack, Let's, let's turn the tables here. Uh, I want to talk about Commerce Hub and why someone would use Commerce Hub versus leveraging Sabre. So I don't, I, I'm not, I haven't been using Stripe. I kind of use bill.com. I kind of use, I kind of use a little bit of everything. My teams just need to get money in the door and we do it however way possible. I think consolidating and having this, especially for simple subscriptions where they pay this per month, I have a smaller team or I have a team that with not a lot of products. Consolidating that within HubSpot is the goal, and that is what Commerce Hub will nail for you, right? I don't use, again, I don't use Stripe that much. I kind of have a Stripe account, but it's, we have too many, we have accounts all over the place. We're taking invoices, we're doing this. This is a great opportunity to really, again, have a digital transformation and consolidation of your payments with Commerce Hub. All the products managed. Go ahead. Or, sorry to interrupt you, Dax, but I'm also, and you were on a roll there, but I also can get excited about this. Did you know that 40% of B2B transactions in 2023 are via paper check? It's insane. It's wild to me. And like, so- They still make paper checks? I don't I mean, how- Believe it or not. So I've had the same paper yeah. check since like, so my mom took me to my to the bank when I was like, I don't know, 12 years old to open up a bank account. 
I still have the same checkbook. Like I don't use checks. And so it's a totally a 20th century relic in my mind. And so, yes, there's so many folks who use a lot of different processors, but also we're almost a quarter of the way through this century and folks are still relying, which is quite wild to say, but folks are still relying on paper checks far more than you'd expect. And while you may say like, oh, well, paper checks don't really cost anything. I would disagree with that. There's definitely a time tax in a I'm big sorry. way. Yeah. And it's just generally a pain in the neck. There's a reason why I've had the same checkbook since you know I was 12 years old. So uh, we're also trying to kill the paper check in a big way. That's a big, that's a big deal. So when you're able to, I mean, there's a lot of native integrations here that are easily leverageable, like the QuickBooks integration. Um, again, with that digital transformation, there's going to be an accounting piece to that. And you'll be able to leverage that with Commerce Hub. Same with the native invoice object. You know, having Zebra does not bring over any type of invoice object per se. We're leveraging everything from Stripe. But you have that native product management and the native invoice object for Commerce Hub. So that's why I believe if looking at the overlap and uh, shout out to Daniel, I know you're looking to see what, where is this overlap? Where's the differences? What, what type of uh, decisions should I make? If you're, if you're not using Stripe uh, heavily, you're not tied into Stripe's APIs. You are just looking to do digital payments. You want to make it very simple, very straightforward. Get started today. Commerce Hub is your answer. And Jack, you could take the side of Zebra. And well, why would why we want to use Zebra? So just at a high level, uh, when I think about folks who are really, you know, rocking and rolling with Zebra, and please let me know if you think I'm wrong here, Dax, are the folks who are really running their business on Stripe. So if you are deeply embedded in Stripe, if you're deeply embedded in the Stripe APIs, for example, where you have maybe a SaaS app where you want that data from your app in order to go into Stripe and have those subscriptions change accordingly. Zebra is going to be the way to go for you. Same thing goes when it, for that historical data as well, as you all are able to bring everything into HubSpot after the fact. Dynamic pricing is certainly a big piece of this. Uh, marketplaces, let's say you're running like a two-sided marketplace, for example, Zebra will absolutely be the way to go. And so just at a high level, definitely explore all options. But if you look at your business and you say to yourself, I am deeply entrenched in Stripe, or I am running my business on top of Stripe, Zebra will be the way to go for you through and through. Yeah, and I call out um, one of the things that's in the chat. So Cal, dynamic pricing. Uh, Daniel also had that question as well. Dynamic pricing in Stripe, at least, is something of tiered price, so graduated pricing, where each unit of something you sell is not the same price. So I'm paying 50 cents for the first 50, but the second 50, I'm paying 40 cents, and the third 50, I'm spending uh, 20 cents. That's something called graduated pricing that Stripe supports. Uh, also, metered billing. If you have uh, if you have a house with electricity. You don't get a bill until the end of the month based upon your usage. A lot of SaaS companies leverage that, power companies, things that have that type of usage-based pricing. That's, again, a dynamic pricing. That's something that Zebra is supporting and will be supporting even further in the future because, I mean, we use it ourselves. We have meter billing for some of our apps. We have different tiers. There's volume pricing. There's, there's a lot of different dynamic ways to do pricing. And um, that's, again, if you're, like you said, a mature company, you're really baked into Stripe, you're leveraging those dynamic pricing, Zebra is going to be the way. When you're more on the, I have subscriptions, I have transactions, I'm looking to transact easily, Commerce Hub is going to be a slam dunk for what you need to do. So I hope that answers the question of what is dynamic pricing, but it's something that would be more on the Zebra side because you're, again, tied into those, those Stripe APIs and your business, if you, if, you, if you use it, you know you got it. It's pretty much the case. And it's something that you're going to be able to leverage Zebra a lot, for, a lot more for it. We recently released subscription management features where you can upgrade, downgrade, change payment date. Proration is right on the horizon as well, just a heads up there. But totally, when it comes to all that dynamic pricing, that's a bridge that you'd want to cross with Zebra and not on the Commerce Hub side of things. Another thing that I'd mention that is worth keeping in our back pocket as we do think about everything, Stripe very much builds for the developer. In fact, I don't think they even run any ads focused towards anything that is not 100% developer centric, which is a really interesting go to market motion on their end, in my uh, opinion. But if you're one of those developers that is very much like working within Stripe, you're going to want to go with Zebra and full transparency there. So uh, if you are using those Stripe APIs, especially when it comes to that dynamic pricing side of things, Zebra is going to be your best bet. Yeah, if you're starting a business, you know, or you're early in your business, there's no reason why you would need to jump to Zebra because it's going to be more, again, for that. We've had Stripe for a long time. We have a ton of subscriptions that we need to have. We have dynamic pricing. 
we're looking to do kind of an advanced payment as a platform. That's going to be Zaber. But again, Commerce Hub checks the box, boom, payment links, invoices, upgrades, downgrades, all in one place, products in one place. You don't need to go anywhere. It's easy to, it's the learning curve is going to be very, very much just, here it is, HubSpot. There's a product. Here's an invoice. If you can read, you got it. So that's where the the differentiate the differentiation is. It's really a big deal for HubSpot to 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 view this and view commerce as you know the next level. Now, they've done a lot of things from becoming just a marketing platform to a true sales. Now with a service and now with commerce, it's 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 getting pretty it's getting pretty lopsided, Jack, in the, in the industry. I, I think I think that there's a, a hard there's a hard decision that most people have to make, and that decision seems to be a lot easier to choose HubSpot when they're looking to really uh, in, elevate their CRM game. We cover a lot of surface area, and I've read every single product notification over the past seven years. It's becoming harder and harder to stay up with, I'll be honest, because we have a lot of new prod notifies. But ultimately, folks, regardless of how much surface area we do cover, I hope that you're starting to see some of the benefits of bringing this commerce motion into HubSpot, because I do think that there's always been this notion in the market of we have our front office teams working here and our back office teams working here with a really big wall between the two. And I think that both Zebra and Commerce Hub were on a mission to break down that wall a bit more and create a little bit more of a middle office, because ultimately you all can see some of the benefits of having that commerce data together with your customer data. It can really empower, power your entire go-to-market motion in a much more significant way, also allowing for you all to spend time doing things that you'd probably rather do, like build relationships with your customers, as opposed to sifting through and saying, who just had this subscription payment fail? For example, no one likes spending their time in that way either. So we're trying to solve yeah, we're it. See, we see, I know a lot of people that are like, well, how do you check and see if a payment fails? Well, every month I have on my calendar to go through my transactions. All of this, like, so shout out to the partners, the HubSpot partners and people that are providing solutions. What we're doing here today is saying that nobody grows when you got to say no. When you got to say no to HubSpot, when you got to say no to this functionality gap, that's a uh uh. We don't we we are we wake up Jack and I wake up to fight that battle to make sure that they are there is a solution. And today we presented two solid solutions for that problem of how do I get my payments data? How do I automate the revenue collection? How do I autom How do I just do the focus? How do I get off work on at five, at five and go play with the kids? How do I do that right now? This is the easiest way to start chipping away at that manual labor organization wide via Zebra, via Commerce Hub, via just having payments in one place. And the key is HubSpot has a solution. This is what we were trying to talk about. So here's a fun graphic to talk about it, but it's again, commerce matters. It matters in the CRM. It can't be external. It can't be siloed. It has to be all in one. And being able to leverage us together, HubSpot and Happily, we have the solutions. We wanna make the solutions. We're listening to we're listening to the forum threads. We're listening to the solutions. We're listening to what needs to happen. And and a shout out to HubSpot for being able to see this vision, make these changes, and again allow more solutions for everyone to make this an easy choice to to use HubSpot. I don't know if you want to add to that, Jack, but I'm just the the horn is getting tooted, and it's it's do rightfully so. Well, I'd say just at a high level, Dax, you and your team definitely churn out very high quality software at a very legit rate. So shout out to you and the rest of the team. Uh, on, on that front. Uh, another thing that I'll mention when it comes to just bringing the commerce motion into HubSpot, for so long, I think folks have thought through the lens of my marketing function is broken, my sales function is broken, my customer success function is broken, very much thinking about things through the lens of like those silos for your teams. I think that that's also not the way to think about things moving forward into this digital future. You really do need to think about your holistic commerce process and go to market motion in a world where you're jumping out of the system in order to build and to get paid that will just cause inefficiencies and so really bringing everything into hubspot to be that center of gravity is what i think we're both after in a big big way and my hope is that you all can give these tools a try and see the value that we've really been articulating here today uh, because i genuinely believe in these tools dax i know that you do as well and i do think that we'll look back five years from now and say you know what that was the right motion because uh, if there's one major competitive edge that I think HubSpot has had over the years, we've been able to really marry our understanding of market forces together with software that people need and happily DAX, you all are very much helping out with that as well. 
for everyone who hopped on the inbound marketing train 15 years ago, I bet you don't really regret it. For those who like really adopted that whole flywheel concept, I bet you don't really regret that either. Bringing commerce and CRM together, I really do think is going to be that third chapter of thought leadership for us. And so hop on this train now, folks. Don't miss this one. I don't think you'll regret it down the road. This is the truth. So yeah, Chris, it is working out. There's a lot of people, again, you look at the business, especially for, again, the HubSpot partners, uh, shout out to the Grow Happily partners. When you look into the eyes of a business and you start to understand the nuance, every business is complicated, every business is unique, but everyone can benefit from having automation. I won't even say the, the two letter word that everyone thinks you need. It's called AI, I guess I said it, but it's gonna be about automations and really making so that these systems and these operations are simple. So I want to pause there. Jack and I will talk for hours at length, hyping, hyping everything up because the world deserves smiles. But we want to pause for some Q&A. If there's any questions, don't be shy. Blow us up. Um, Jack, what's your favorite color? I'm starting off. I'm going to start off hot. Jack, what's your favorite color? I think blue. I think blue would be my favorite color. I mean, all of my clothes are actually like black or navy blue. So one of those two, I guess, frankly, half of my gear is HubSpot gear at this point. So I could probably... Uh, bring, you know, <laughs> wear something other than my company's gear. That's super fun. Uh, yep, yep. Can I mention one thing on the AI side of things? Dax, can I get Oh, out? I knew I was going to open up Pandora. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd be remiss <laughs> if I didn't bring out my crystal ball a little bit. So I'm certainly no AI professional by any means, and I don't think there's a single person on the planet that really knows where this is going on the AI side of things. What I do know is that wherever it goes, data is going to be powering those machine learning models full stop. If your data is scattered in a ton of different places, are you going to be able to really leverage all of that power if and when it continues to come our way? I'd argue that uh, no, you won't. So I don't know exactly what's in this crystal ball, but I knew that do know that a world where your data is completely disjointed in a lot of different systems, you're going to be left behind. Don't get left behind. I think we're in we're going to see a hockey stick moment pretty regularly when it comes to artificial intelligence, I think. Yeah, I think really, you know, as we as HubSpot users daily, really, really dive in and get better and better at it and get better and better in using what it has for us. Just the 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 resounding, the resounding echo that I see when I, you know, talk to myself and talk to HubSpot is that. It is the centralization of data is going to be everything exactly. Whether you're building out this app, that app, the third app, external, bringing all that into HubSpot and having a place, you know, with custom objects, with invoice objects, all of that is super important. So Slim has a question. Product, oh, this one, I think this is for you, Jack. Product Thanks. objects fall under Commerce Hub. So uh, recently noticed the new product index page. So we're excited of what's coming. Are there plans for dynamic management of the product libraries through connections with outside systems like ERPs? Mm, it's a really good question. So uh, yes, products do indeed fall under our umbrella on the Commerce Hub team. Uh, and they've been cranking out some really legit updates recently. The one that I'm most excited about is indeed that product index page. And folks, you see one of those index pages and really quickly you're like, wait, this feels like an object. We're going to move in that direction a little bit more. Will it be a full-fledged object at some point? I don't think so, to be completely honest. But uh, yes, we're going to keep pushing in that direction. Now, when it comes to just APIs in general, we do indeed have product APIs. So, Salem, I'm not sure if you've crossed that bridge when it comes to connecting our product tools to your ERP system uh you know, in a more holistic way. I will say though that the Commerce Hub product team is thinking a lot about APIs as we go into 2024. So I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. However, we do have the payment object, the subscription object, and the invoice object. Objects generally have APIs within HubSpot. So could I see a world where instead of using that product API, you use maybe the invoice API at some point? Yes, I could see that. Stay tuned for more from us. We'll see exactly what happens. But integrations is something that we're thinking a lot about nowadays. And Salim, if you have specific, if a specific use case or specific questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. This goes to absolutely anyone in this session here today. I'm happy to work through anything that's on your mind. Uh, and I'll always be honest too, if, if Zebra or a different tool is a better solution, I will be the first one to let you know. I can promise you that. We, we may have a little bit of something cooking to link as is irrelevant to Zebra that will be linking to your products and your pricing. So 
Uh, we may have something a little bit something for you, but we understand that that is a big deal because a lot of times the source of truth may not be for your product specifically, may not be HubSpot. Your transactions and everything could go through that. So how can we enable Commerce Hub by something that we're building right now? So there's some there's some stuff cooking in the lab for for that. You know, irrelevant of what you're irrelevant of your payment processor, but more about your connection with your actual product. So that one's a big one. Uh, France has a question. Um, so ChatSpot doing something with Zebra objects, build me X report. So that's actually a good question. I'm not sure if ChatSpot speaks to custom objects or any native objects. Jack, do you know more about that? I, I would say I haven't, I've used ChatSpot a half of time. <laughs> so I was really engaged with ChatSpot when it first launched and I've stayed pretty tight with the ChatSpot team because I guess I like to just nerd out on this type of thing. It's my understanding, though, that in order for ChatSpot to really connect to a given object, that our objects may need APIs. I'm going to look this up after this session, and I may walk back this comment, uh, but I don't think so. I will say, though, as we do think about, like, how can you use this commerce data in HubSpot in a world where you have a very powerful, you know, artificial intelligence engine backing everything? Reporting is absolutely one piece of this. Serving up product recommendations and automatically like distributing those recommendations is definitely another one. And I think we're going to, I think we can see about like 10 to 20 pieces on the board right now. And there are about 500 pieces on the board that we just can't see yet. So I'm admittedly not positive. You definitely stumped me on that one. I don't think so. Will it be possible in the future? I'd be very surprised if not. What about custom objects? I think the question is more is geared around so um, the actual Zebra or just any custom object, regardless of the Zebra subscription or the Zebra transaction. But can ChatSpot speak to custom objects and build a report to custom objects? That's pretty much the question, and I'm I'm actually curious about that myself. I think Friends, basically we don't know. Is is we the, we we're not we're not confident. I think we can. I would imagine so, uh, but that would you know speed up what we'll be able to do because the the the, the idea is that ChatSpot just has to know is it a date field is it a, is it an amount field and that's going to be known by the date the product type property type so probably good so I would appreciate the love friends friends that yes honestly I'd I'd be willing to bet that yes you can uh, I'd be surprised if not if I'll be completely honest we can we can take it old school because our Zabers blog has. Tons of resources on how to build X report, Y report, Z report. So we can take it back to the web 2.0 days where you can check out a blog and see how to how to do such a thing. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not in the web four, five, six that we're going to be going to. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Can you hear us okay? Looking good. So, man, I'm going to have to throw some, some thanks out. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, taking some time out of your busy day, especially a busy hump day, for um, being able to just understand the future of commerce and HubSpot. So shout out to Jack. Man, I appreciate you jumping on, man. We have so much to talk about after this, uh, so much to so much love to, love to share. But I want to put a big thanks and big hug to everyone that uh, decided to come listen to us talk. Plus one, thanks for having me. Thanks for giving me the mic. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Folks, Zebra, happily, keep up the good work. You all are on fire. And we, we couldn't do it without you, literally. So appreciate the love. Everyone talk soon. Find us on LinkedIn. We're here. You know where we're at. Peace. And you know it was built.